Hi, uh, I'm Liz Banish. I'm the studio manager and um, printer here at the Center for Contemporary Printmaking in Norwalk, Connecticut. And I'm making a short little video of the current exhibition that we have in our Grace Ross Shanley Gallery. Um, the Instructor Showcase 2021 exhibition that includes work by myself, um, other printer Christopher Shore, and our workshop coordinator Megan Morrow. Um, so I'm making this short little video just to kind of give you a preview of the work that we have in the gallery, namely mine. Um, I'll let Chris and Megan, I'll let Chris and Megan make their own videos. I'm going to try to do this in one take without having to edit this, so bear with me. Okay, so starting here in the main gallery, um, right behind us is one of my first pieces. Um, let me try to shift myself so that we can get a view of it without the glare, which might be impossible. Um, there we go, you can kind of see it in my shadow there. Um, so this is my first piece that we have hanging in the main gallery. This work is called Presently Off the Coil. It's a Bromwell print, which is a form of alternative photography um, that is sort of a pretty niche um, printing method that is pretty popular in Britain still, um, but was something that um, I learned at the Penumbra Institute of Alternative Photography in New York City. And that was a very fun process. So I recommend looking it up, Bromwell printing. Okay, next, walking through our main hallway here. Um, there's two pieces of mine hanging um, as well. Uh, so this first piece, um, is called um, Dick Likes Chowder, The Sun Shines on Dick, um, and there's Dick right in the middle there, he's enjoying his chowder. Uh, this piece was done, um, it's a lithograph and an offset monotype with hand applied gold powder around his little crown. And um, there's three of these, this is a small edition of three. Um, next is the continuing saga of Dick. This is um, Dick Likes Chowder, The Sun Sets on Dick, <laughs> um, and he's not enjoying his chowder anymore. But this is also done as a lithograph for the key image, and the color is all done in monotype. Um, this one is actually an edition, a variable edition of 10. And sorry about the glare of my iPad on that glass there. Definitely battling with some glare today. Okay, finally in this hallway is this other lithograph. This is like a 12 color lithograph, kind of lost count. Um, but this one's called Dreams of the Nautilus. And this little squiddy guy is um, a really cool creature. Um, I discovered him when I was doing my undergraduate thesis where I was responding to and researching turn of the century prehistoric illustration. Um, so like, you know, what early naturalists were, you know, how they were illustrating what the, what the prehistoric world looked like. And this little creature kept popping up in constant illustrations, but rarely named, um, the sort of little squiddy creature with like his little wings flapping and he's like, kind of like flying on the surface of the water. Uh, I discovered that he was finally called, um, he had a nickname Aristotle's Argonaut. And this is actually what early naturalists thought the Nautilus looked like. Um, I thought he was a little flappy flying thingy. So I like that very much and decided to give him a little bit of a, you know, respect. Um, okay, so leaving this main gallery here out in front, well, the hallway gallery, not the main gallery. Now we're in the main gallery. And um, yeah, so my wall is right behind me. When you first walk in the gallery, it's on the right. Um, so all my work here is on this wall and here. Um, so we'll do a quick little introduction to some of my work here. Um, so to start, this is a nice little etching of mine. This one is called Death Drive of the Rich. It's a picture of a shark eating the sun. Let's see if we can get a nice little close-up action there. Yeah. There you go. Okay, not bad. Um, next, uh, I have a, a, a line of cut here. This is a recent line of cut that I made um, during quarantine, actually. Oops, sorry, that's my head. Um, this one is called Mother Shark. Going along with that motif of, of sharks eating the sun. Um, 
Next here we have a dry point and found letterpress block. These little figures here are made out of little found letterpress blocks that I found at a vintage shop a while ago. Um, and this one is called Heartbroken Divers. And it's actually a um, dry point print scratched into um, like Sintra type plastic, like sort of like foamed PVC. It'll hold the dry point line for a little while and you can get like a small edition out of it. Next is one of the biggest etchings I've ever done. Um, it's in three parts. Let me walk out far ahead of it first. So here you can kind of see the total compilation of the three prints. This one is called Rape Whistle. Um, it's an aluminum etching done in three plates. And I'll get back next to it so you can get a sense of the size. Um, so here she is. Let me um, show you some detail shots here. This is an aluminum etching done in three colors. So three plates make up each image, or each sheet rather. And each sheet comes together to piece together the figure. So this, um, there's a lot going on in this image and I definitely don't want to like go too far deep into like explaining the thing. Um, but they're just like as far as the sort of images that I've borrowed from to compile this, um, I have sort of an anthropomorphization, an, a, anthropomorphization, anthropomorphization, I don't know if that's the right word, of um, the goddess, uh, not the goddess, the nymph. Um, Charybdis from, if you remember the Odyssey, um, Charybdis and Scylla were two monsters um, keeping the Argo from crossing a strait in southern Italy, in Greece, and um, Charybdis was a nymph who had been turned into a monster by a jealous Hera, always turning people into monsters, and Hera gave her dogs that sprung from her hips. So there's the dogs there. Um, also a little borrowing of the copper tone trope of advertising where the little girl is having her bathing suit pulled off by the dog. You can see that with her bathing suit bottom there. And in the background, I have like this sort of like wallpaper sort of like pattern um, made of anglerfish and um, the sort of like Greek god of fertility, not really a god, like maybe like a lesser, lesser god, uh, Priapus male fertility, that is, like sort of a, a deity of male fertility. Um, that was that. <laughs> so the next one um, is this nice little uh, lithograph and cyanotype combination here. This one is called I Want to Die Like a Sailor. Um, this is a piece I made after doing a lot of reading um, and media ingestion about the um, Erebus and Terror voyage to find the Northwest Passage where um, all these British sailors were set out to find the passage over the Arctic Circle that would allow you to cross, you know, over Canada into China, um, so they to have to go around Africa. And at the time, their boats got stuck in an unseasonably frosty ice pack for the season and were stuck for years and ended up eating each other. And like, yeah, it's a good story. Um, I mean, it's tragic, but I have to be honest, horrible things really do interest me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's I Want to Die Like a Sailor. And you can kind of see like details of like harrowing sailor images and stuff like that going on in here. So this is a two color lithograph and cyanotype. Okay, next we have like a little bit of lighter subject matter. Um, these are called fish butts and coconuts. <laughs> Just a nice little compilation of my favorite things. Um, they're cyanotypes and I made them by drawing onto pieces of clear film and exposing them onto cyanotype paper. Um, there you go. You can get a better sense of what it looks like there. So that's fish butts and coconuts number two. 
And this is fish butts and coconuts number one. All right, next we have my bread and butter, which is stone lithography. It's my first love. That's what I got my degree in, um, or at least what my senior thesis show is all about. This is actually the last stone lithograph that I made at the UMass um, Amherst studio. And this one is called, uh, what is this called? This is called Effigies, in parentheses, Baskin Shark. Um, sort of like my love letter to Leonard Baskin and his sculptures. And at the time, I was also really interested in the um, Icelandic dish Hakarl, fermented shark. <laughs> so had to, comp had to pair the two, you know? Here we have like our mummified shark. There's his little head and his tail and he's buried in the ground next to a Baskin type figure. Got a little butterfly flapping up there. Um, and the last two pieces I'll show you. Um, this here is another sort of photo etching that is a favorite of mine. This one's called Curtains. And it's an image of taxidermied dogfish sharks kind of in front of like a backdrop, in front of all these lights, surrounded by all these lights, kind of dancing, dancing and dead. And the final one um, that I'm gonna show you in this little video is this one is Flash Melville. Um, it's a seven color lithograph. And yeah. This is, you know, after being mildly obsessed with Moby Dick chapter 60, The Shark Massacre, where he writes, Melville writes about the sharks becoming so enthused by whale guts in the water that they can no longer tell between themselves and the gore around them. So they, quote, turn round like bows, bend round like bows, and start devouring themselves and their own tails and their own entrails. Good stuff. Okay, uh, thank you for watching this. I hope this wasn't too frenetic and that I didn't say um too many times. Um, <laughs> well, there's, there's the final time I'll say that. So yes, please come see the show. It's a really good show. Um, Instructor Showcase 2021 here at the Center for Contemporary Printmaking in Norwalk, Connecticut. Thank you.